Janet Yellen, Ben Bernanke, and Jerome Powell have all discussed the problems of what we are facing today. Now, obviously, they don't see the problems that we do. They don't highlight the internal risk. They generally stick to issues that are further out into the future or those that exist outside the borders. Either way, they've pointed to the problems and there's no chance this won't end in failure. Trying to sustain a global economy on purely debt, rising deficits, and unbelievable wealth inequality is impossible to sustain. 2008 brought some issues to light, but the stink was covered up with a spray of Febreze. Not good. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, the primary focus of the video will be about central banks, particularly with the Federal Reserve. We are going to talk about Janet never going to see a crisis in our lifetime yelling. We'll talk about Ben making sure deflation doesn't happen, Bernanke. And Jerome act as appropriate to sustain the expansion, Powell. I also want to get into what the ECB has said. I want to talk about what's happening with the store closures, the real economy economy because this is impacted by what the central bankers do. A lot of people don't realize that. They don't make the connection. Every night they log into their stock trading account and they count their seven shares of Amazon and see what their assets are valued at right now. But let's get into the truth. We'll begin with Janet Yellen. She says there is a good reason to worry about the U.S. sliding into recession. Now, this is coming from somebody that said we will never see a crisis in our lifetime. Former Fed Chair Janet Yellen said the U.S. economy is in excellent shape, but facing several risks. Just like what the Federal Reserve has said in their statements, in their meetings, they talk about this risk. But the risk is out there. It's not here. We don't have to worry about it here here, but it's out there. That's why we cut interest rates so many times. That's why we introduce QE4, not because of what's happening internally. No, no, no. Everything is always out there. It's far off into the future. It's outside of the borders. Don't worry about it. This is repeating over and over again. It's coming from these different mouthpieces, different suits and ties, but ultimately the message is the same because the orders are taken from the highest of the high. One of the most prominent is in wealth disparities that she she said are extremely disruptive. This is something I have covered many times before. In a downturn, the Fed would have little room to move due to low rates, she added. Now, my goodness, she was one that was actually suggesting negative interest rates would be an option. She's mentioned that on more than one occasion historically, but the fact remains, you are trying to actually expand this bubble further and further and further instead of reacting to a potential crisis. See, in 2007 into 2008, they started to see what was happening and what did they do? Well, they try to slow everything down. They try to react. This time around, they're actually trying to expand this bubble further. You're making a big mistake by doing this. There has never been an instance in history where this has ended well. Trying to do something like this, although it's un unprecedented anywhere around the world in any page in history, but the ultimate fact is that this will cause a big, big problem. There's an interview that she did in here, and I was listening to it. If you want to check it out, the link will be in the description for this one. You can listen to what she said. It is insightful because this is somebody that was obviously in the know. I'm sure she knows exactly what's going on. They talked about the events that happened while she was there, as well as her opinion on what's going on right now and how that relates relates to Powell and so on. So check it out if you have some time. Now, my intention for the video today was actually to go through some of the testimony from Powell and type up what was interesting. And I'm glad that I actually found through real investment advice. They took the piece that I really wanted to get into. In recent testimony to Congress's Joint Economic Committee, Jerome Powell stated, you have to see this, okay? It's unbelievable to hear it from the Federal Reserve, but the only reason they admit it is because well, it's not on us. No, no, don't look at us. And also the problem is into the future. 
future. That's the only time they're able to admit any of the problems. The debt is growing faster than the economy. That's unsustainable. It's not the Fed's job to say how the government should cut the deficit, but we need to get the economy to grow faster than the debt. He specifically said, you don't have to reduce the debt. You just have to get the economy to grow faster than that debt. And what do they do? Well, they print money. And of course, that doesn't help the economy at all. Otherwise, future generations will be paying more of their taxes to cover the government's debt costs than for other things like healthcare. Now think about that for a moment. You and your children and their children are going to be paying the taxes for what they purchase, their income, their property, and so on to go to things like paying the debt to the Federal Reserve because of the system that they created. This is madness. I think the new normal now is low interest rates, low inflation, and probably lower growth. Wait a second, 1.9% GDP, even though that is padded, we know that, and we can expect more of that, potentially even weaker. When you look at the different Fed reports that have come out, I've shown you that they are looking at sub 1% GDP, not good, even with the lower interest on its debt, the government still needs to reduce its budget deficit. The deficit is growing so fast, even though we have seen interest rates decline so much, it simply doesn't matter because this balloon is getting so massive. Interestingly, these were not the first time we heard these words in 2012. Then Fed Chair Ben Bernanke told Congress, rising federal budget deficits are posing a significant threat to the US economy and are likely to cause a crisis if not brought under control. If I put that in my title, if I put that in my thumbnail, I get criticized. Ben Bernanke says it, it's totally fine. Having a large and increasing level of government debt relative to the national income runs the risk of serious economic consequences. Over the longer term, the current trajectory of federal debt threatens to crowd out private capital formation and thus reduce productivity growth. Plain and simple, Simple, get the debt and the deficits under control or you will have problems. This is two different people at two different times saying what's happening now, the path we are on is extremely dangerous, causes fragility and creates crises. Now, I know there's a lot of people who love taxes, but I'm just going to show you this information. I'm not going to put any of my personal input onto it, but most of the budget goes towards defense, social security, and major health programs. This is the breakdown right here, and it is showing you fiscal year 2019 historical tables, as well as numbers from 2017. So we can give this a bit of variance, but I'm sure it's somewhat in this range. The interest on the debt itself is 7%, okay? According to this, 7%. At the bottom here, you can look at this. Transportation and infrastructure. I always see the arguments about how we need to pay more taxes because somebody has to fix the roads. Somebody has to make sure that they're up and running. 2% of your taxes go to that. Education. There's serious problems within education. And if you've ever read Charlotte Thompson Iserbeet's book, you know the true problems, but regardless, education represents 3%. But the big ones in here obviously are located at the top. And this is unbelievable when you see the size that these have ballooned up into. These are the unfunded liabilities that don't make it on the balance sheet. There's been many different calculations on different programs that are there, different problems that the US faces. Many have calculated it to be well over $100 trillion. And there's no possible way that this will ever, ever be be paid back. Now, what happens as a result of this? Generally, what we see historically is that a central bank will end up going into the system and monetizing it, creating a hyperinflation. I'm not sure if that's the case in well, you know, with the US, but ultimately, we're going to see some major problems. 
I wanted to show you what's happening with the euro. If you haven't seen already, you know, I do updates on this type of information as often as possible. And you can see that their balance sheet has grown. They have begun as of the beginning of November, they have begun a new round of quantitative easing. Surprisingly, though, it's only 20 billion. And I say that tongue in cheek, 20 billion euro per month, 20 billion per month. Now that to me is quite small because they had many multiples higher than this in previous instances. Instances, and I do believe that they will have to increase this along with the balance sheet itself. So this was actually winding down a little bit throughout the year 2019. And they decided, no, 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 we're going to have to kick that up. So as of November, this information had come out. And I'm sure we will see this continue to expand just as it had in previous years. And we know what that does. It doesn't have a positive effect whatsoever. It actually has a negative effect. Take a look at this euro area financial stability environment remains challenging this information comes directly from the ecb's own website it's brand new and there's some points that i wanted to make here in the paragraph in the middle here there is a good point downside risks to global and euro area economic growth have increased and continue to create financial stability challenges low interest rates should support economic activity in in the euro area but may also encourage excessive risk taking by some non-bank financial institutions and highly leveraged non-financial corporations and in some real estate markets and what do you think has happened they have used the cheap money to support their fraud this has been going on all levels all around the world look at what has happened to the real estate bubbles globally they know exactly what they're doing and unfortunately this risk taking creates problems for the average person they don't know what's happening they're just going to their nine to five job they're just throwing money into their 401k and they're getting hurt really quickly wanted to cover a few points the worst of the global economic slowdown may be in the past according to goldman sachs i tried to say that with a straight face but essentially they're saying don't worry trade issues all behind us growth is all there everybody's on the same page everything is fantastic I'm not even sure why this type of information is allowed to be printed, but here it is. I just wanted to bring it to you. Whenever you know we have one of these companies like Goldman Sachs saying this type of activity out there, you know, it's all good. My job is to basically look at this, seeing it from a different angle and trying to propose what individuals that are, for example, from the Federal Reserve are suggesting otherwise. Macy's blames sluggish sales on weak shopping malls. There's always going to be some finger pointing, but that really leads me into this point out of course site. You can see at the bottom of the page so far this year, US retailers have announced 9,052 store closures and 3,956 store openings, a continued trend that has been going on right now. Global economic weakness taking place. Speaking of which, WeWork lays off 2,400 employees. This was expected. Everybody knows what was going on here. The valuation was something like $47 billion dollars they opened up their books just before the ipo people were freaking out wondering what the hell is going on with this company and everything flipped upside down what's happening with these major corporations is completely unsustainable fueled by debt and the cracks have certainly appeared that's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button by clicking one button before you leave, you're supporting this channel. If you want to build a business, if you want to make money, if you want to learn about e-commerce in general, this course here is completely free. I created it for my subscribers to learn about this. Check it out, theamazongps.com. If you want to actually learn about the financial system and how it works, learn about the asset classes, learn about how to reduce your debt and so on, these two books have everything you need. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. This video has a lot of key information and I hope that you will watch it. All you got to do is click on that and I will see you there.